Hi guys, welcome to another episode of uh, Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at a US M1 bayonet made to fit the US M1 Garand. This bayonet will also fit the Model 1903 Springfield and the Model 1903 A3 Springfield rifles as well. So the M1 Garand was formally adopted in the US in 1936 and initially it was made to take the current in-service bayonet which was the Model 1905. The Model 1905 had been adopted uh, years earlier obviously for the uh, Springfield rifles and was used extensively throughout the uh, First World War. There were actually four different patterns of the Model 1905. So there were uh, there one made prior to the war, one made towards the end of the war, one made in the 20s and 30s. And then finally, uh, the US started production of more 1905s with plastic grips in 1942. And uh, that's a version of what we have here. So the 1942 versions are often referred to as a Model 1942 or a Model 1905 slash 42 or a Model 1905 fourth type. This one here has been modified and cut down into a M1 style of um, bayonet. Now those 1942 versions had a different scabbard to the earlier 1905s. They had what was the, uh, the M3 scabbard, which is essentially what we have here, except in 16 inches, the same as the 1905's blade. Uh, when the M1 was adopted, it was obviously a uh, much shorter scabbard, but I'll get into that shortly. So in 1942, the US Cavalry Board uh, made recommendations of experimenting with shorter 10 inch bayonets. Uh, and those experiments were found to be highly successful. And um, that new pattern of bayonet was uh, accepted and adopted. And in 1943, production began of essentially the same bayonet with a 10 inch blade instead of a 16 inch blade. Now, the M1 bayonets would, uh, 3 million of them would be produced in total between 1943 and 1945. And there would be a brief number, uh, again, made during the Korean War. I believe there's another 70,000 during the Korean War. The M1 bayonet saw a lot of heavy use throughout uh, the Second World War and a little bit into the Korean War as well before it was replaced by the uh, M5 and M5A1 bayonets, which is what I have here. As you can see, essentially, it's just a um, M3 style blade, little push button as well and plug for attaching into the gas block. But I've got a video on that one already. If you want to know more about that one, check that video out. So as, as I just said, they saw a fair bit of use. About 3 million of them were made in total and they were used extensively throughout the Second World War. Um, from 1943 onwards as well, a number were actually made from a refurbished 1905s. So they take a 1905 and they cut the blade down from 16 inches down to 10 inches. And as I previously stated, that's what we have here. So as you can see, the fuller runs all the way to the tip and that's an indication that this one has indeed been shortened. That, and it says uh, 1942 on the base of the Ricasso there. So when these blades were cut down, uh, there were a couple of different um, styles to the tip of the blade. I believe that came down to the uh, shape of the fuller because the fullers come in both square and rounded. And I believe the uh, difference in the um, shape of the tip came down to the fact that they wanted to have as much uh, strength at the tip because the fuller obviously removes a lot of that strength. Uh, these bayonets were made by um, six manufacturers. So I said 3 million uh, of the M1s were made and about 1 million of the 1905s were shortened. So a fair few. But uh, the M1s were made by six different manufacturers. They were made by the American Fork and Hoe Company uh, who have the abbreviation AFH. You'll find these abbreviations on the Ricasso. It's just there, just above the US inflaming bomb. Now, AFH made about 23 of total production. The second company was Oneta Limited. Uh, their abbreviation is OL, and they account for 16% of total production. Then there was uh, Power Blade Company. Uh, their abbreviation is PAL-MOD, or Power Mod and they account for 17% of production. 
Uh, the fourth manufacturer was uh, Union Fork and Hoe, or UFH, and they account for 26 of production, so they were the biggest producer of the lot. Uh, the fifth producer is Utica Cutlery, uh, which is UC-MOD, 15% uh, production. And finally, the final producer was Wild Drop Forge and Tool, or WT, and they only account for 4% of production, so they're quite uh, uncommon. And uh, WT actually stopped production in 1943, and of all those companies, they were the only one who didn't shorten, uh, didn't shorten pre-existing blades. So while all six companies manufactured uh, M1 bayonets, uh, Wild Drop Forge and Tool were the only ones who did not um, shorten uh, existing blades down to the 10-inch configuration. Now, I'll very quickly go through the construction of the blade. As you can see, we've got a spear tip on this one, nice fuller, got a true edge and a little bit of a false edge that's been put in there. You won't always find that with different blade configurations. Nice solid spine, nice deep fuller. We've got our markings on the Ricasso being the manufacturer at the top. Underneath that, the US flaming bomb with US either side of it. Some of these were, well, a fair few of these were made for Greece after the war. And uh, those ones will have an E on this side of the flaming bomb and US on the other side of the flaming bomb. And they're 1942 at the base, but that's only for the um, 1905s that were uh, converted down. On the reverse side, we have a serial number on the cross guard. And on the tang, we have AFH for the manufacturer again. Now, America Fork and Hoe and Union Fork and Hoe are the only ones who have their manufacturing code both on the Ricasso and on the Tang. All of the other manufacturers only have their marking on the Ricasso. Now, moving down, we've got uh, two holes either side of the blade, and that's to accommodate the locking lugs on the scabbard, as you can see there. So when the blade fits into the scabbard, you depress the button, and it's locked in, it can't be removed without depressing this button. Incidentally, this button is also what's used to fix the uh, bayonet to the rifle. So essentially we have a lever that runs centrally through the handle up to the mortise, pivoting around uh, this screw. And it's spring loaded with a spring running horizontally above the button. You'll see that there's the lug here in the mortise slot, and when I press the button, that lug disengages. And that's what locks the bayonet to the rifle. So it's a, a ramped lug, so it'll slide onto the rifle without being depressed, but then it'll lock in place and it'll only be removed by depressing that button. They've got a nice little uh, eagle head pommel and uh, plastic grips. So these plastic grips are retained by a flathead screw. I don't have a screwdriver handy at the moment, so I can't <laughs> remove it to show you. But um, underneath, they will be stamped with the manufacturer of the grip. And uh, from memory, there's um, four manufacturers. I've got uh, some of the details here, actually. So if it has the abbreviation AB, it'll be manufactured by uh, Auburn Button Works. If it has the abbreviation CPP, it will have been made by Columbus Plastic Products. And the abbreviation NLOC, or N-L-O-C, it will have been produced by Norton Labor Laboratories. Uh, from what I can tell, the fourth manufacturer left them unmarked. So if it's not marked, uh, it's the unknown fourth manufacturer. Now on top of the bayonet, we also have the scabbard. The standard scabbard for the M1 bayonet is the M7. Now the M7 is essentially the same as the M3 that was used for the earlier 1905s or the later ones. And it's a nice uh, long uh, scabbard that's been shortened down, essentially. And it's marked here on the um, this piece here. We've got US M7. I've got a wire hanger on the back. Now, yeah, quite a few of the M3 scabbards that were used for the 1942 versions of the 1905s, um, they came with the M3 scabbards that were the full 16 inches, and they were actually converted down into M7, so they were cut down to length and just had a uh, new mouth attached. Other than that, that's probably about everything I've uh, managed to uncover. 
uh, to date about this particular bayonet. So if I've missed anything or made any mistakes, guys, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for watching.